What is good, my blockchain gang fam? Thank you for tuning in. This is the Rice Crypto Show, and I'm your host, Rice. And on today's episode, my special guest is Colin Pape. He is the founder of Presearch. Now, before we get into it, if this is your first time ever checking out any of my videos, I do encourage you to explore my channel. Make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my videos as they come out. And we're just gonna go ahead and get right into today's interview. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, today's guest on the Rice Crypto Show is the founder of Presearch. This is Colin Pape. Colin, I appreciate you coming on, man. How are you doing today? Hey, Chris. I'm good, man. Thanks so much for having me. No, nah, man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being a supporter of the channel. And, and, and you know, we've been trying to make this interview happen, and there's a lot of good news going on with Presearch that we're going to talk about in this interview. But the first question I really like to ask people, and this is something I haven't even asked you before, is... How did you actually get involved in cryptocurrency? Yeah, so, so I come at crypto more from kind of the local space, which uh, my, my other business, shopcity.com, there's kind of an, alternative, uh, an opportunity for alternative currencies. And uh, we've got a, a system, it's more like local gift certificates, but uh, really just see that there's this, uh, this real need within local communities uh, to create uh, alternative currencies that can support uh, the local multiplier effect uh, within those communities, and that kind of led into to crypto. Okay, and is that um, you know, I, I guess I, I normally what I ask is, can you can you tell us who you are and how you got involved in crypto? Do you mind backtracking and telling us a little bit about who Colin Pape is? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life. Uh, Largely self-educated, uh, went to school for computer science, but uh, dropped out. The, the industry was just changing so rapidly. I could see that the curriculum really was irrelevant as soon as it was uh, coming out. Uh, <laughs> fell in love with the, the internet uh, in the, the late 90s and just the ability to publish something and then see it you know, up online for anybody in the world to see instantly. I just realized how powerful it was. and. and uh, so yeah, I kind of used those skills uh, really more to support local businesses. Ended up founding uh, shopmidland.com, which is kind of like a local directory and marketplace. Uh, almost 20 years ago now, still uh, running it uh, to this day. And then that kind of became, thanks man, kind of became uh, this, this broader uh, business, shopcity.com. And then through that, uh, I got into uh, you know, more of the, the local currencies, alternative currencies, time, uh, based currencies and uh, and then just uh, saw that there was really this need uh, to have an alternative to Google and figured that this was a way to uh, potentially create more of a, a level playing field for search uh, using cryptocurrency as rewards to get people to actually switch off of Google so uh, I absolutely love it man and when I first heard about pre-search I mean like the idea was just I thought was one of the best ideas that I've heard and then I started using the, the actual platform and saw that it actually worked and had use case and value and started looking into the white paper and just, just instantly became a fan. So for people who might not be familiar with what pre-search is, I know you, you mentioned some things about Google and being a Google alternative. How, what is your elevator pitch to people who aren't familiar with pre-search? Yeah, so I, I mean, it kind of depends on who you're talking to, but uh, our, our biggest kind of hook is uh, it's uh, a search engine that rewards you with cryptocurrency when you search. And it is uh, an interface that enables you to search through many different search engines. You can still search through Google if you want. Uh, we have our own engine, and then there's about 100 different ones that you can choose from. And, and we generally are creating the most value for people that are like internet power users or web workers, people that have kind of specific resources that they might want to search on a regular basis. And we have more or less like a federated search field or the Switzerland of search where you can, you know, type your query and then choose where you want to direct it. And then we basically send you out to whatever uh, resource that is. 
Yeah, no, and I think that's a really cool idea to be able to have like all these different platforms to search for, all these different sites all in one different place. And I did recently do a review on the platform, so I'll have links down below and above so people can check that out to go a little bit more in detail with some of the things we're talking about. But so you're using, I guess I call it like a segregated search field for different search engines and the cool thing about that is it's allowing for a lot more privacy. So even when you're using pre-search and you, let's say I'm searching for Bitcoin and I decide to use Google as my search engine and I go ahead and do my search and at that point I'd earn 0.25 pre. I think I could do that eight times a day. Is that correct? Uh, up, up, up to eight pre per day. So like up 30 eight pre day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so how does that how does that protect us more in our privacy and our data if I'm using pre-search, the actual pre-search engine, and then selecting Bitcoin as my search word, and then selecting Google as my search engine? How am I protecting my data and Google not collecting that? Yeah, so, so, th so that one actually is a little bit uh, tough. Where, where we can fully protect people is basically with the pre-search engine. So, so one of the options is uh, there's, there's an icon that has a P on it and uh, it's in kind of a magnifying glass. That is the pre-search engine. That is a 100% private uh, engine, uh, very much like DuckDuckGo. Uh, nothing is stored, nothing is passed. It's like, totally anonymous. Uh, and then uh, you can search DuckDuckGo through, uh, through pre-search as well as a couple of other privacy focused search engines like Quant with Google actually when you're heading out to Google we really uh, can't do that much to protect you ultimately there's an opportunity to, to you know have a proxy involved uh, but we have currently chosen not to do that because there, there's actually a, a lot of people don't really realize that when you're using a VPN or when you're using you know a proxy service you're really just shifting it from one place to another there's still an intermediary who has an opportunity to intercept all of your information. And the risk is actually a lot bigger when you're using a VPN or when you're using uh, some other type of proxy service because uh, right. you're basically you know, dealing with probably a smaller player and they might you know, potentially uh, just have access to, to stuff that, you know. Yeah, so they, with us, they, we, we just try to you know, use uh, uh, more, you know, basic stuff, uh, and, and, you know, ultimately that's kind of where this model needs to evolve to being like a fully open source and transparent, uh, platform because then you can audit it yourself. And that's, you know, something that's on our roadmap, uh, right now, you know, we're, we're largely leveraging third party APIs and, uh, you know, we can uh, open it up and, and kind of what we've, we've been thinking is the way to kind of bridge the gap is, you know, uh, open it up to basically people that already have trust within the community so that they can validate it. And then as we get towards being the, the you know, fully open source uh, search engine with our own index and, you know, a node service and all that kind of stuff, then people can actually go in and validate exactly, you know, how information is being used uh, or, or not used in this case, not stored. Uh, but you know, for, for us, we don't want the responsibility of storing people's information. Honestly, that's a, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah. And, uh, we try to keep it to the bare minimum. Basically, I mean, we do have people's email addresses, uh, because you know, you're registering for an account when you, uh, create one. Uh, but you know, aside from that, uh, you know, search queries, any of that kind of stuff. I mean, we don't, we don't want to have, this big treasure trove of information for people, you know? No, yeah, I totally agree. And, uh, and that's what I do appreciate about what you guys are doing there at pre-search. So I, I didn't actually, and I'm glad I asked that question because I didn't know, like just looking at the pre-search search engine about the, uh, the, the pre-search engine with the magnifying mm -hmm. glass and the P. So I know you guys had the D search, which is the independent search engine within pre-search. So what's the difference between D search and the pre-search engine? Yeah, so, so basically with the pre-search engine, we're using like a bunch of paid APIs. So it actually costs us a fair bit of money to run that search engine. It's about $7.50 per every thousand queries. And uh, so it's you know something that we have available and it's available for people that 
really do want to preserve their privacy. And, and basically why we're able to preserve it is because we're paying for it. Right. Uh, because everything else, as soon as you get into an unpaid thing, you know, there's some type of monetization involved. And so we basically, you know, to roll out our ad platform and to, to really kind of, uh, you know, I, most people are still searching Google, basically, really. Through oh, I know. And and it, it's through, sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it's, 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 it, they've, they've got a pretty impressive product at the end of the day. And it's, you know, it's, it's tough to beat it. And we've, you know, we actually have that, that paid engine out. Uh, and I mean, it's actually quite good. And if you, if you do, you know, get an opportunity to use it for a while, I mean, I, I, I actually really like it and think that it, it serves some pretty good results. Uh, but, you know, we kind of uh, realized that we weren't going to be able to scale that out to the, the broader community just because of the cost. And so we started looking at alternatives and uh, really kind of the best alternative was to leverage uh, some, you know, existing systems, some existing APIs to provide the results. And then basically how it's funded is there's, you know, traditional uh, search ads that are on top. And so uh, there's a revenue share, you know, we get a portion of that revenue, the provider of these APIs gets a portion of the revenue. And we basically get a service that we can scale out to millions of users uh, without, you know, going under. Uh, right. And, and you know, we've kind of done it in a way where we're, you know, blocking as much of the information as possible that can go out. So it's, it's very similar to using Google, but, you know, there's a little bit of additional privacy protection. Uh, and then really what you're doing is you're supporting the project. And you're, you're, you know, we have the opportunity to then display these pre-search ads, which ties in with the keyword staking system that we've launched. So, um, and yeah, I mean, you, you read the white paper. I mean, we, we kind of set out from the beginning, uh, you know, I, before we did the launch the project, I went out and I met with a, a guy uh, who had raised like $70 million to build a search engine, Rich Sprenta really sharp dude. He was actually, if, if you look at his Wikipedia, he, he built the first computer virus in the world. He's one of our advisors. He's a pretty, pretty neat guy, but I wanted his feedback. Hey man, you've done it. Like what are the, you know, the pitfalls? And, you know, he kind of told us how hard it was to build a search engine. And then I, you know, met with this guy, uh, Jim Jorgensen. He ran a platform uh, that was called alladvantage.com and it was get paid to surf. It was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I was like, dude, you know, what would you run into? Oh, my God, the fraud and blah, blah, blah. People trying to take advantage. And so I just tried to learn from all these guys before even doing it. And, you know, I, I realized pretty early on, okay, we've got an ideal. We've got, like, where we want to go. You know, where we want to go is fully transparent, fully open source, community controlled, giving people the tools to have all the search choice, to be rewarded, to have direct relationships with marketers, all these, these kinds of things, you know, fully privacy preserving. And, and that's the end goal. But in order to actually build usage and to get us to a point where we can have a model that is, you know, sustainable, scalable, like we need to start off from a pretty pragmatic standpoint. And so we'll do as much as we possibly can to, you know, get to that goal right in, in the early days. But then, you know, here are some of the things that we're going to have to do. Yeah, it's going to have to be a little bit centralized to start. Yeah, there's going to have to be some advertising to start. But, you know, what we're doing is building an audience. We've got, you know, uh, 1.35 million registered users, more than 10 million visits a month. And we've actually got now like a profitable, viable business model that is going to get us to a point now where we can, do all those amazing things and bring on the people and the talent and reward the community and have value within the token economy so that this thing can actually happen because there's so many things in this space that are like freaking pipe dreams. And honestly, like they're just not going to ever work, you know? Right. No, but, I agree. Anyway. I, actually, I actually just put out a video yesterday. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, the lesson of the video is basically telling people to do their own research and make sure they're checking into these projects, not investing on, Yep. speculation and just some cool idea or some cool name or logo. Yeah. So you guys launched D search not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, and that's like I mentioned earlier, it's an independent search engine that's within pre-search. And right now, um, you know, I checked this out on your medium page and I'll have links down below, but I encourage people to check out yep. the pre-search medium page because there's a lot of updates and a lot of information that you can check out. And right now you guys are doing what you're calling a double pre-motion. 
Yeah. Um, which I think that's a really cool play on words. But normally when people search, they earn 0.25 pre, and you said they can earn up to eight pre a day. Yeah. Um, with using the D-Search method, your independent search engine, you're actually awarding people double right now. And I know that it said it wasn't going to be a permanent thing. It's a limited time. Um, yeah. But I wanted to highlight that, you know, let people know that within the search engine that they could actually earn double the pre by searching through D-Search, which is by default the first search engine um, choice that you have of all the different engines that you can search through on the pre-search. That's platform. right. So I thought that was really cool. And, Thanks, you know, in talking about some of the new things that you guys are launching, um, and in the video that I did with the, the review, I also put the keyword staking video. So this keyword staking is something new that you guys just launched. Um, really cool concept. And, you know, since you're the founder, I always like to ask people involved in the companies, you know, people might have saw the video. But from your words, you know, from, you, from your mind, what, what exactly is keyword staking? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a mechanism to drive demand for the pre-token, I mean, ultimately, which is, is really what is needed and what a lot of projects are really struggling with. I mean, there's no actual demand and it's all just speculative. And so, you know, if you don't have the demand side of the token economy, then, you know, it's hard to, to really do much with the token. It's hard to incentivize people. It's hard to really do anything besides speculate. And right. so uh, this is, is basically a way for people to take their pre-tokens and you can uh, basically bid against a specific keyword or a phrase. Uh, so if I wanted, you know, rice crypto as my phrase, I would go in, there's a keyword stuff, research.org. You go in, there's a search field right on the top. You can type in whatever term. It'll show you if anybody else is staking it or not, and if they are, how much they have staked against it. So let's say I went in there, nobody's staking it. Uh, I could then click, you know, stake this. I can create an ad. I could, you know, put, you know, check out uh, the, the Rice Crypto videos here, and then a link to your YouTube page or wherever I want to send it. And then I could bid, you know, a thousand pre-tokens, which is the minimum. And then whenever somebody types in Rice Crypto into pre-search, uh, your ad's going to show up and it's going to be at the top of the results. So it's a way to either, you know, monetize or to like, you know, build uh, business traffic where mm -hmm. you're, you're actually looking to generate, you know, an ROI or it's a way to uh, spread a message. So if you have, you know, maybe a controversial alternative viewpoint or if you just have something that, you know, is a pet project, maybe it's a, you know, a nonprofit or something that you support, you can basically drive traffic to those uh, different uh, causes, which is, is kind of cool. That is uh, very cool. But yeah, it kind of closes the loop. So that way, you know, we have demand for the, the pre-token and then it becomes valuable for the people that are earning it as their reward. So, uh, you know, we had tried a couple of different models. Like when we first launched in 2017, we had these text link ads below the search field, which, you know, were okay, but like they weren't really, there was no targeting. Uh, and it was basically just going in like a round robin rotation. And then we started realizing, okay, well, if we want to scale, most people actually want to be able to search from the, the search field in the, the browser. They don't want to have to go to presearch.org every time. And so we built out some browser extensions and then traffic really grew but we kind of lost that real estate. So then we came up with, okay, well, we could put this interstitial page up where we can kind of layer it in between, you know, when you're in your search and then when the results pop up and we could throw up like a display ad there. And so we were running it at like a quarter token per view basically, which then offset the reward cost. And that worked out not too bad either, but again, didn't really have the same uh, relevance because it wasn't keyword specific and, then some of the feedback we were getting from people is that they didn't want to spend their pre-tokens on advertising. They didn't want to spend it. So then we were thinking, okay, well, how are we going to, you know, solve this? Okay, well, we need to get our own real estate, which is where, you know, the pre-search engine and de-search came from because, you know, not everybody likes this interstitial page. And then, okay, well, if it doesn't make sense to have this consumptive model where people are burning tokens essentially or consuming them every time that their ad is displayed, uh, you know, deducting it from their balance. What if we came up with just the staking model, which would create demand for the, and, and so that's what we ended up, you know, doing a little bit of market research on. 
and we found out that, okay, yeah, this is actually going to be pretty appealing. And so we ended up, you know, basically announcing that towards the end of 2019 and we rolled it out on January 29th. And I mean, it's been super well received. We've got about 45 million tokens that are already staked out of, you know, the, the total supply of like 170 million right now. And uh, there's about 2,000 keywords that are, are being staked so far, which is just scratching the surface. Right. And, uh, but, you know, the token value has gone from, you know, I think the lowest value was like, you know, 0.16 uh, cents. Uh, so like 16 one hundredths of a cent. And uh, now it's like up to around four or four and a half cents just in the past like 60, 90 days. So uh, definitely, you know, we've, we've been closing the loop and lots of good things have been happening. And uh, we feel like this is a great model for, for everybody and uh, probably something that's going to be used more throughout other projects, kind of where you're using like staking to a priority placement for uh, for sponsored ads. It makes a lot of sense. No, it totally does, and I think it's it's a it's a freaking great idea. And uh, you know, I mentioned the Medium page. You also have a YouTube channel which has a lot yeah. of short, informative videos. So I'll have links down below for all that. And the cool thing that that I you know am seeing you know from the growth of pre search is how you're developing use case. And I know you guys are working on more ways. Um, you got the keyword staking where you can stake for the advertising, which I think is a great idea. But you guys also have the pre-store where people can buy merchandise, like where they can buy like pre-search hats and shirts using their pre-tokens, which I think is really cool. Are there any other use cases that you guys have created for the token? Yeah, I mean, the, through through that store, there's kind of two different sections. One is like merch and then the other is is services. So we do actually enable projects to... Uh, pay, let's say, if they wanted to be one of the default providers that are, you know, in the top, whatever, six or seven uh, icons when when people register for pre-search or you can pay basically like a, a listing fee to get your uh, your search resource just added in as one of the, you know, 100 or so resources. And so we've kind of, you know, broken down all the different services, all the different ways that we can create value for, you know, search products or, or crypto projects. And uh, they're all listed in there. And then, I mean, yeah, ultimately over time, kind of more of the vision is, is to, uh, you know, enable people to participate uh, more actively in the actual search experience. So they could be curating information or, you know, they could be running uh, a node that is crawling the web as they surf and then submitting it into an index. Uh, and then, you know, having another layer of nodes that's, you know, doing the, the data crunching on that index. Uh, you know, we're going to eventually have ways where people can actually contribute different uh, user interfaces and, and basically earn some of uh, the rewards and the, the advertising revenue that is, is paid in through the system. So, um, yeah, right now, I mean, it's, it's kind of those cores, but there's so much that can be done with this. And then, you know, ultimately, as you get that kind of solid, uh, you know, value that is backed by something. We're basically right now backing the value of pre with traffic as there becomes that kind of established, you know, value, then it does actually become more of a, a medium of exchange and people can do peer to peer transactions. Uh, so, you know, we've got a lot of traction right now in, uh, you know, Venezuela and Argentina and these places with, you know, these faltering economies uh, with their, their central banks that are uh, failing them. And, uh, you know, there's almost enough traction there where you could start to actually develop peer-to-peer -peer economies. So uh, that's kind of exciting, but a little bit, you know, outside of the, you know, controlled uh, or intended uh, scope of the, uh, of the token. So Right. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, you can't control, like, what people decide to do. But no. the, the use cases that you guys are creating, I think, is, you know, super impressive. And, um, you yeah, know, ultimately, you know, I mean, I really think that, as you mentioned, you guys have over 1.3 million registered users. You're getting like over 10 million visits a month. Uh, you're one of the top five blockchain properties. People don't even have the community probably doesn't even know what pre-search is. Yeah. And, and that's, that's crazy to think that you guys have built this model that works, created this to token economic system, have created all this use case and value and, and have actually done the right thing by like, going out and trying to do research and 
find out what's needed and then build things around what's needed. I think that more companies should take that kind of approach um, or projects because like when you just try to build something and try to solve a problem without knowing the problems that cause the problems from the people that experience these problems, then you're not really solving any anything in the long run. So I think you know doing that market research is a great thing and I really like everything else that I'm hearing and what I'd like to know, um, what, what can we look forward to with pre-search in, in this year, this in 2020? Yeah, well, the, the, the second half of the year is where we're really going to get into actually building out uh, like the, the open source search engine. So I, I'm super pumped about that. I know a lot of people are. Uh, again, we've kind of taken this more pragmatic approach where we want to get the token economics because if we have a token that's valuable and in demand, then that enables us to compensate people in pre and to attract talent to the project. And uh, so now that we've kind of got some of that stuff uh, uh, that's working, now we can, you know, find the, the, the talent and come up with, you know, the, the leadership. Uh, so we'll have some key hires over the next uh, three to four months uh, to basically lead that initiative. Uh, but, you know, the second half of the year is going to be largely uh, building out the actual uh, open source search framework. So I, I, I know there's a huge need for it. Uh, people are really pumped about it. And some of the technology that we're going to be able to, to leverage is starting to become mature enough, you know, things like IPFS. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot that's going to happen there. Uh, you know, we've still got a lot of uh, optimization uh, with the, uh, you know, the keyword staking platform, there's still a lot that we're going to be able to do to facilitate uh, on the peer-to-peer -peer side. So enabling people to transfer tokens between accounts within the portal is, you know, one of the most requested features. So uh, a lot of stuff there. And then, and then really more mobile apps. We've been largely focused on desktop and, again, more of these, like, web workers uh, but you know, obviously mobile is, is huge right now. Like 94% of our traffic is actually on desktop. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the main reasons is because, you know, with the browser, mobile browsers, it's really not that easy to set pre-search as your default search engine. It's kind of this, you know, walled garden, you've got, you know, uh, Chrome and you've got, uh, Safari, which is like really locked down and now you've got brave, but with, with all of those uh, browsers, it's really not that easy to choose anything besides the defaults that are generally, you know, Google, DuckDuckGo, maybe right. Quant, uh, and Bing. And so uh, it's been tough to get usage there. You basically have to, like, kind of hack the browser almost and, like, set it as an icon. So yeah, so I was going to say, that's actually what I've done. Is I've that's taken, what you've done, yeah. Taken the actual website link and make it an icon on. So all you got to do is just click that and it takes you right to the pre-search page and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it, man. I'm, I'm right there. So I would, yeah, I would, that's that's awesome, man, that, that, you, that you've actually <laughs> done that. Because a lot of people haven't been able to figure out how to do it and they just like, so they don't use pre-search on their mobile. And so we, we've actually just uh, released, I think it was two or three weeks ago now, there's an Android app, so there is actually like a pre-search browser which uses pre-search as the uh, default uh, engine and you can use it through the regular search field. Uh, and we've got an iOS version that I, I'm hoping is gonna launch in March. And uh, so yeah, definitely just doing more on the mobile side because you know that's uh, where, where it's at. Uh, we do have a, an iOS, like a proof of concept that's actually pretty cool. I used it this morning when I was driving into the office and, you know, I was driving and I shouldn't be on my phone, but I wanted, you know, to make a phone call to, to somebody, I realized I need an oil change in my truck. And so I didn't want to type. And so I just, you know, hit the P app and then I hold down the button, you know, pre-search and I actually use Google maps on it. I pre-search Google maps for, you know, JP service center. And then it launches Google maps and then it runs the search on there. And then I click the phone icon and, away it goes and it's actually it's pretty slick but it's more of a proof of concept it doesn't have token rewards it doesn't have uh user settings or anything like that so we we, we will probably go back to that uh ui at some point because there is a lot of potential with voice search but for now sticking to more of a traditional browser kind of experience very cool man i love it and so for people that are interested in in uh buying or getting um some pre how can they actually do that uh, yeah, so we have a, a marketplace. It's just marketplace.presearch.org. Uh, or if you go on to CoinMarketCap, you can see it's currently available on HippyTC and Probit. 
uh, probably recommend Probit a little bit more. It seems to be a little bit more reliable for most people. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, there's, uh, you know, might be some other venues uh, forthcoming as well. Yeah, no, I definitely want people to stay, you know, up to date. And, you know, I'll probably be doing some update on some news related things. And because I know you guys do have some exchange listings you can't talk about that are going to be coming about very soon. So, you know, I'll try to mention that on my own. And since you guys have a lot of stuff happening, more towards the third and fourth quarter of the year, I definitely want to bring you back on and talk about some of the improvements and where you guys are at and, and you know, what we can have to look forward to ahead. Now, before we wrap things up, man, was there anything else that I didn't cover that you wanted to say or any closing thoughts? No, man, I, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity and appreciate everything that you're doing. I think you bring a uh, really cool perspective to the space and uh, you've got a lot of great uh, people on your show. So keep up, keep up the awesome work, man, and the persistence. And uh, I'm hoping that, yeah, you're going to transition this to a full-time gig because uh, the world needs, uh, needs people like you out there uh, helping people connect with the, the projects and the important stories that are happening. So uh, yeah, thanks, man. Uh, dude, man, and honestly, thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate everything, man. I mean, you've been very supportive of me and my channel. Um, you guys are a sponsor. You've helped me out with a couple of the conferences I've been to. So I can't thank you enough for what you're doing to help me out. And, you know, definitely what you said is very humbling. I, I try to bring a different perspective to the space. And, and as an outspoken anarchist and voluntarist, I'm dealing with a lot of shadow banning and censorship. I mean, I feel like I'm putting out some really good quality content. I'm interviewing a lot of super high profile people that yeah. a lot of other channels aren't even able to get. And yeah. but I'm still not being able to reach these people. So, you know, I, I appreciate your support, man. And, and even regardless of the fact that you guys are, and you are supporters of the channel, man, I just, I really like what you guys have created with pre-search and prior to working with you in partnership levels, you know, I was a, I've been a user since the beginning, man. And yeah. you know, I love it. I love what you guys have done. So I appreciate it. And like I said, I'm going to have links down below for everything we talked about. So yeah. people are checking us out and you're not familiar. And also make sure you're using my referral link. So if you're not using pre-search, you can use my referral link and I actually get to earn a little bit of pre, um, which helps go to support the channel ultimately. So now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your first time ever checking out any of my content. I do encourage you to explore my channel. If you like what I'm doing, you can support me by subscribing, liking, and commenting, and most importantly, sharing. And as always, I do encourage you to be the change by practicing change, and I love you all. Thanks, Rice.